All right, welcome back to the Make or Break Shop. This week we're taking a look at this O-Tour 15 watt laser engraver to see if this is something that you could actually use in your shop. All right, what is up guys? I am Brandon and here at the Make or Break Shop we make DIY projects for people that aren't perfect like me. And one of the things that we do do is uh, we actually use tools to help us get as close to perfect as possible. And in this case, we're gonna be taking a look at this laser engraver to see if this is something you guys can add to your shop. I actually have a lot of these automated tools in my shop. I have a big 50 watt laser I did a review before, as well as the 3D printer, a couple CNC's. And what's really unique about this guy is just how small this thing is and the price it's a little under 200 bucks now i did get sent this free from gearbest to do a review but this is uh, totally honest for you guys to give you my real opinion and kind of how this review is going to be structured is i'm going to give you right off the bat what i think of this machine and then we'll go into all the details all the nuts and bolts a bunch of different tests all that whoa i think it's going super fast there's timestamps down below if you want to jump to any of the sections so right off the bat when I first saw pictures of this thing, I was like, ah, I don't know, it looks kinda weird. Normally, uh, especially with CNC's, you're gonna at least have two supports to make the whole thing rigid. But as I've been playing around with it, I've actually found I, I really enjoy using this thing, mainly because of the size and literally how portable it is. If this thing wasn't firing, I literally could pick it up right now and put it somewhere. This thing is uh, about six inches by six inches that it, it can engrave. So if you're doing cutting boards um, or small coasters, or you're really just trying to add a logo uh, or something kind of like that, then this could be a really, really cool option for you guys. There was a, another unit that I reviewed that is about the same price. It's a little under 200 bucks and also has a CNC built into it. But just from the laser side of things, I actually like this better. Uh, the big part is that machine only had, I believe, like a five watt laser and this thing is 15 watt. The controller is open source. The gantry is super easy. Uh, there's not a ton to it, but when you're laser engraving, you really don't need a ton to it. You don't need anything really rigid because it's not pushing against things. Honestly, all you need to do is make sure it doesn't wobble as it's going and it actually gives you clips to do that. So let's jump over into the unboxing really quick and putting this thing together. So it comes in a pretty small box and really it doesn't have a ton of pieces. The assembly maybe took 20 minutes. It comes in pretty much two main units. You've got your X axis as well as your Y axis and the Y axis actually has the electronics on it and then all the stepper motors and all that kind of stuff. So really easy to put together and then you just attach the laser. One thing that is kind of annoying with this is uh, actually attaching the laser. When you guys are doing any laser cutting, you're gonna wanna be able to focus the laser. So actually with my 50 watt laser, I'm able to adjust the bed. Uh, so like the Z axis, uh, really easy. There's just a knob I screw. But to adjust this, um, there's a couple screws in the back and you unscrew those and you can drop this up and down. They say that you wanna have it at about 55 centimeters, uh, which is what this is set to right now. So you kinda of see how I have this guy set up right now, that it is on top of the same height as the material that I'm cutting, well, ish. If you were actually just to put this on the ground and then you were going to engrave like this, you would uh, need to raise this up. So it actually does come with clips to where if this thing is running super fast, you can screw it down to a table or something to keep it steady, but you would have to then adjust the laser if your material wasn't big enough to go over the entire thing. So actually the majority of the stuff that I've been cutting out or engraving rather, kind of like this Star Wars Mayan, Thing. The material itself is big enough to where I can actually have it underneath the laser. And again, this thing is super light. And then you're good to go because it's raised up the same distance as the material that you're cutting. So I like that it's super portable, but if you're running it really, really, really fast, which I've run it pretty much as fast as it goes, then it doesn't really wobble. But if you're concerned about that, then screwing it down permanently to a bench or whatever you're working on, um, that can make it a little bit harder just because you've got to adjust this laser. So let's talk about the cutting area that you're working with. It's got 150 by 160 millimeters and I'm actually doing the max area right now so you get an idea of what we're working with and for something actually this small 
is surprisingly big, which you can uh, work with. One thing that I found with my big laser, my big 50 watt CO2 laser, especially if I'm engraving, I don't engrave stuff that's much bigger than a six by six inch, which is what that is in Imperial, because we're weird. But uh, you guys can see that, basically right there, pretty good size for uh, what you are working with. So talking about the build for a minute, um, it's pretty much plastic and aluminum. So these are just extruded rods, they're aluminum, um, pretty similar to most of these type builds. And then the supports are, I wanna say it's actually acrylic, so it's not super rigid, but again, you really don't need a ton of rigidity to something like this. And then you are using um, a belt system, so instead of like threaded rods, which is what I've got for my bigger laser, it's just using a belt. So eventually that's probably gonna stretch out and you'll need to tighten it. So let's talk about the laser for a second. This is a 15 watt diode laser. So when you're getting into these lower wattages, normally you're gonna be working with the diode laser. They're not as powerful, obviously from the wattage. And they're also going to be colored. So you see that blue color as this thing is going. That's compared to a CO2 laser, which has a really long laser tube um, that bounces through a bunch of mirrors and comes straight out. Um, this whole laser unit is just right here. Um, you can remove this and put a new one on. This comes with a seven watt. 15 watt option. So let's talk about the software. Your board is actually right back here and it's not propriety. Propriety? I can't say that word. It's open gerbil, open G-R-B-L, which you can actually see all the source code over on GitHub, um, but it connects really easily. And what's nice about this is that it is PC as well as Mac friendly, and so you can connect it up to anything. But if you have seen my other laser reviews in the past, I am a huge fan of using Lightburn. We won't go super deep into Lightburn, but there's links down below if you want to check it out. They are in no way affiliated with this video. I just really like the software. So as the laser is going, a quick shout out to the awesome and wonderful supporters over on Patreon. Uh, this would not be possible without you guys. So thank you so much. If you'd like to support this channel, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash make or break shop. Not only do you support this channel, but you also support the Maker Podcast called the Make or Break Show that we put out on a weekly basis. All right, let's get back into it. Let's hit the pros of this unit. It is really small, which could be a con because your actual overall engraving area, cutting area isn't the biggest, but because it's small, it's super light, you can pick it up, put it wherever you want in the shop. Something that is nice with the software that it comes with, the laser gerbil, as well as I believe light burden does this is if you have a power failure which actually had it can go back and restart what you were doing and as you saw with the build another pro is this thing is super easy to put together it doesn't take very very long it almost is put together in the box you just got to put a couple screws and then another pro with this again is the laser and the software that it comes with it is pwm which is pulse width modulation and because of that you're able to get varying intensities or really different shades of gray and black in one go. A really fun thing you can do with lasers is you can actually print pictures onto different things. So we are actually doing that on this guy right now. But you can see with the show I've been quite the fan of, The Mandalorian, there is varying grays. And so it did all of this at the same time. Let's talk about the cons with this unit and probably a lot of you are thinking it already and that is just the overall safety of this guy. Even for me, it's kind of weird to have just a laser open, like super open like this. Like I could just put my fingers in right there. And even though it comes with glasses, still really looking at a laser, you, you don't want to do that. The bigger laser, it is a full enclosed unit. I can drop the top down. And if you wanted to make it safer, that's something you're gonna have to do after the fact. You'd have to build your own box, build your own enclosure, which you can totally do. Another piece with that is it doesn't really have any like flame protection. So with the bigger lasers, uh, there's an air assist and all that really is is just compressed air that is shooting at the workpiece as you're going. So if you do have any flame ups, it's putting it out um, and then it actually has a dust extraction. So it's pulling the dust out and it is um, exhausting it outside. But this guy is running just right here. I do have my garage door open. I am in an open air environment, but if you weren't, but you would definitely have to worry about fumes. But I haven't had really any flame ups. That could do with the fact that the laser isn't super high powered and it's always moving as it goes. I do imagine though, if you just 
had it set in one place and turned the laser on, eventually you could start a fire. Let's see if we actually can get a fire going. Let's see, let me do 0.5 millimeters per second, which is real slow at 100 power. So it's going super slow right now, but it does not look like we're going to be starting a fire, but it is smoking a good, good bit. It does have some software straight up built into the board to where if it finds that something is going weird with it, it's just gonna shut the laser off automatically. All right, so we're gonna see what happens if I try to stop this thing. My hands, don't try this at home. Cool. So if it has any interference, anything like that, the whole machine stops and the laser turns off. So that is a very good safety feature. So as I've been playing around with this thing, I have been posting over on Instagram at the Make or Break Shop if you wanna follow me. I was asking if you guys had any questions, so I wanted to answer those real quick. This one's coming from MKNG. Joy, can it engrave on a non-flat surface, i.e. the bottom of a bowl? Depending on how big it is, you might be okay. What you're gonna run into is just, again, the focal length of the laser. Uh, it's going to go out of focus as it's going around the bowl. But I actually did a carving of a pumpkin for Halloween where I wasn't rotating it, and that was on my bigger laser, and it worked pretty, pretty well. And uh, if it's in a small enough area, you might be okay. So what should I test out? I got this from several people and that is Baby Yoda. And actually did a bunch of different tests with him. And I would vary the speed and the power so you can get different darknesses. And this is just on cardboard. He is pretty stinking cute. This is the way. This is coming from Donovan over at Once Upon a Workbench. Can it cut one eight inch plywood? Let's find out. We're just gonna do a square. So we're doing 10 millimeters per second at 100 power. And I'm imagining this is going to take quite a few passes to actually be able to cut this thing out. With my 50 watt laser, this would be a cut that I could do pretty much with one pass. And I believe this is pass number four, five, number six. So we're at six passes right now and still have a long way to go. There's nothing on the back. These other guys, uh, these are what actually cut out on my other laser. So I'm just using this as a good point of comparison. You probably could cut through about quarter inch plywood eventually. This is gonna take a really long time. So this probably isn't your best solution, but let's try. So this is just like a really thin cardstock, running it at 1000 power. Let's see if this does it on the first pass. All right, it's close. I think this will just take two. Two or three passes. You can definitely cut this out. Uh, it actually comes with some materials that you can test out. Some foam core. Slicing through quite a bit. So I'm probably actually have way too much power, but it will definitely cut all right, and these pieces actually are cut out pretty good. Let's cut out a piece of felt. Oh yeah, this is slicing straight through. Pretty good on just one pass. Let's try and do something a little bit different. Let's so actually carve this out with another laser. So let's see if I can do something similar with the small guy. Didn't really have any luck with that. So I'm gonna say stone is probably not your best bet. So from Atomic Lamp Light, have you done any tests to see maximum material thickness for cutting? So you just saw what was happening with the eighth inch plywood. And really with cutting, it may not be your best bet if you're wanting to cut anything over like cardboard or paper or cardstock. Um, it's really gonna be more of an engraving machine. And speaking of all the different materials and everything that it can do, you can actually see kind of a breakdown on wattage as well as materials and how it works. So you can see at 15 watts, for the most part, you're going to be engraving. And Zeke Gas just gave me a heart, so thank you. Another question I've also gotten is how legible can you get text, especially really small? It does a pretty good job. This is the size of a finger. Let's see if we can go even smaller. All right, I think we're getting pretty close to how small I can get this guy. Let me get my finger for reference. Another thing that I'm finding super useful is just how easy it is to get something engraved. Saw my mallet, put it down real quick, and now we're carving a Thor. So on a scale from break 
to make, where break is a zero and make is a 10. How would I rate this guy? A 7.5. The positives being the fact that it's super mobile. You can do a lot of really cool stuff. It's a great way to get into doing lasers and it's not insanely expensive. But then again, the negatives probably are the safety. So you wanna be really cautious when using this guy, like I'm probably not. So if you're wanting to engrave especially or cut out some cardboard and paper, you're going to be good to go. So a good comparison for this unit is a CNC slash laser for about the same price point that I reviewed a little while back. You guys can check that out right there and I'll see you there in just one second. So until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys. I look so goofy with the double glasses on. Oh, <laughs> still going. Don't need to take those off.